you know, there was this anger in me and there was this desire in me to become someone who can defend themselves, to become someone really strong, because I wasn't strong. I grew up an only child in a house that had a lot of anger and pain and abuse. I definitely dealt with some pretty serious bullying in my high school years. One time, uh, a guy was beating on me in class and I looked at the teacher and she said, and I said, are you gonna do anything? And she said, well, you probably deserve it. I was searching for people who would, who would really love me and that I could love back. When I turned 17, I joined the military against my mom's desire. We had, we had to force her to sign the document, <laughs> my dad did. <laughs> and they gave me a special forces slot, which uh, would give me the opportunity to be the baddest dude I, I could become. Uh, the only problem was I went to uh, the medical review and I failed the colorblind test. They said, well, you've got two options. You can be a admin specialist, which <laughs> then I started crying because to go from special forces to admin, now we're, now we're struggling here. <laughs> and then they offered me the other position, which would be a chaplain's assistant. And I said, which one do I have a better chance of killing terrorists and getting shot at? And they said, uh, maybe chaplain's assistant. And I said, all right, I, I want that one. <laughs> you know, I deployed to Iraq when I was uh, 21 years old. We got into Iraq, and on the sixth day of my tour, uh, one of our helicopters uh, went down and seven of our guys were killed. And I remember my uh, chaplain waking me up at, um, you know, four or five o'clock in the morning, and. I remember seeing his face. And he looked at me and he said, we have, we have a fallen angel. And we've lost First Sergeant Rodriguez. We've lost Anthony Mason and, and several others. And I remember my, my chaplain counseled soldiers for about 40 straight hours, one after another, after another, after another, that was just devastated. We held the memorial service. And then the next day it was like it, um, it was like it never even happened. We took that pain and we put it away and we, we drove on. Several months later, there was a small town outside of our base and one day uh, a suicide bomber walked into uh, the school that was there and blew himself up. Our base hospital took in those kids and my chaplain and I went to the hospital and, um, you know, I saw, I saw children with parts of their faces missing and missing limbs and um, and I just stood there looking and, and taking all this in and, and feeling um, feeling frozen and all those feelings of wanting to be a hero or a combat dude and you know wanting to be, become something great and I remember just feeling helpless. I came home and it was a couple weeks after I came home that I began having nightmares and tremors that, um, uh, that I was killing children. And I would wake up in just a pool of sweat, screaming, crying out to Jesus. And that, that began a really dark time in my life where I turned back to what I knew before I gave my life to Jesus and started drinking and partying again to try and fill that hole and to deal with what was happening. And the PTSD I was dealing with, I felt like a complete monster. I just went out one night and got so drunk and I came home and I remember having handgun and, and processing why I should take my life and that that would actually make more sense than going on like this. And I called my uh, mentor at three o'clock in the morning, choking through tears, crying and just saying, why? Why did we lose our guys that day? Why am I experiencing this trauma? Why is this happening? And he just said to me, Ben, when the disciples lost Jesus, it was the most devastating moment of their lives. And I was pretty pissed off at him that he started giving me a Bible lesson. But I figured I'd stick it out with him. And he said, the disciples who had followed Jesus for three years and watched him do the impossible, you know, they thought that 
He was going to set up shop and become the king and use all of his power. But instead, he goes and gets taken away and is beaten within an inch of his life, and he dies on a cross. They didn't understand. And what they couldn't see in the midst of all of that pain was the greatest victory that the world had ever known, and that was Jesus dying for our sins and for the sins of the world. And he said, Ben, that's where you are. You are in that place where you're in so much pain and you don't understand why, but there's a, there's a Jesus victory beneath it. And if you hang in there, you're going to come back to life. Just like Jesus rose from the dead, you're going to rise back to life and you're going to have a fulfillment of a promise in your life. And I said, okay, I can believe that. I'll tell you here and now that um, it didn't get any easier. But week by week, month by month, I began to re-engage my faith, get around people who would support my journey. One of the biggest things that I learned was a phrase that has given me so much clarity, that helplessness produces rage. And all those situations, which I know so many veterans we, we, we can relate to, of standing over someone while they're bleeding out and they're dying and you feel helpless. But what I've found is that we have to go back to the root of that helplessness so that we can have clarity for that rage and allow the love of Jesus to come into that so that we don't have to be angry anymore. That's what he's done for me and that's what he's continuing to do. When I walked off the bus coming home from Iraq, the first thing that I saw is a hundred Vietnam veterans lined up shoulder to shoulder holding the American flag and guarding my welcome home. And then God gave me this vision of what it would be like to honor these Vietnam veterans because they've never been honored and they've never been welcomed home. That's where God is taking us so that we can bring anything that has died in them to life in their hearts and for their families. I was so hopeless and in darkness but with God, I have found life beyond what I could have ever thought was possible. And I'm watching my dreams unfold before me. My name is Ben Peterson, and I am second.